welcome back uh, so in our last class we have talked about dc potentiometer and uh, we have measured unknown dc voltage in this class we will talk about ac potentiometer and i hope the calibration and measurement phase uh, was clear to you otherwise it will be difficult to understand uh, this uh, class okay now the first difficulty that we have when measuring uh, ac voltage with potentiometer is that there is no standard ac cell okay so we do not have a standard ac source which we can rely on i mean whose value doesn't change with any factor in i mean so there is not, not a there is no such reliable ac source okay which we can call as standard so this is the difficulty and in this talk uh, in this class we will see uh, how to use dc standard cell dc standard cell to measure unknown ac source using potentiometer so what we will do okay so let us first draw the so this is the long wire of the potentiometer with uniform cross section now we want to measure a unknown source which is ac so let's draw the unknown source so this is a unknown ac source okay so the way to connect it is of course like this connect one side to one terminal of this potentiometer wire another side to a galvanometer and we'll use a jockey which can move along this wire so that we will find the null and by noting the length from one side to the jockey we will find the value of the emf that's the way we do it right but now we need a supply a power, i mean a voltage supply here without which it will not work so that's the main thing so let's put a voltage supply so this is connected across the two ends of the potentiometer now this source must be ac right this must be also ac because if this is not ac then the potential drop here will also not be ac and then we cannot get a balance if this is dc a dc cannot ba get balance a ac okay a dc voltage can never be equal to a ac voltage and also another important thing we need is that the frequency of this uh, ac source must be same as the frequency of the unknown source okay so important point the frequency of the supply voltage by supply i mean this okay call this vs frequency of the supply voltage vs must be same as the frequency of this unknown voltage call it vx must be same as the frequency of the 
okay else we'll never get a balance okay now you also have seen that in case of dc we actually use another standard voltage source uh, and then we first do the standardization by connecting this galvanometer initially to this okay so we we may have a switch so in the standardization phase if you recall what we did in case of dc we first connect it to the standard cell and then we set this to a desired length okay a convenient length and then we adjust the current through the wire so for that we need a rheostat okay so you can also draw a rheostat maybe like this if you like r1 so calibration step is calibration so it means put the jockey at a convenient length put the jockey at a convenient length okay do not move the jockey and and move, do not move it anymore instead adjust r1 adjust video start r1 to get null at that convenient length that's what is calibration but as i already have said the problem is we do not have a standard ac source if we had a standard ac source we would have done this in a same way like we did for the dc okay but we do not have a standard ac source so what we do is this we instead connect a dc source standard dc source estd okay and we connect the jockey here so put it at say k1 okay switch uh, call this switch as k1 and this is position 1 this is position 2 so i can write uh, k1 switch k1 is at position 1 okay during the calibration and then okay we'll again we will put the jockey at a convenient length so whatever length we choose okay so for example if this is uh if this is 1.08 volt so we may choose say this length okay this convenient length to be say uh 108 cm okay for ex example we can choose this as 108 cm so which will imply which will imply that 1 cm is 0.1 volt okay so choosing 1 cm is equal to 1.08 volt by 108 cm so, which is 1 by 100 so 0.01 volt per cm so this is the choice we have made for calibration for example you can do it okay but now there is a problem the problem is this is now dc this is ac we can never get a balance okay so 
we can never get a balance therefore we also need a dc source here but we need a ac source for measuring this unknown so therefore we will have two sources okay so we will have another dc source and say we can connect this there is a key say which can connect between this call this k as key as k2 position 1 and position 2 okay so during calibration therefore we must have So, we, ha we should have k1 at position 1 here. So, the galvanometer is connected to the standard cell and k2 at also position 1. Now, the supply is also connected to this battery DC. Okay. So, this is at position 1, this is also at position 1. Now you choose a convenient length which we have chosen like this. So we put this at 108 centimeter for example. This is an example only okay. And we adjust R1 until we get the null okay. And once we get the null, after we get null, then 1 centimeter will be equivalent to 0 0.014. 1 centimeter will be equivalent to 0 0.01 fold. This is calibration step. Now we will go to the measurement step. But before we can go there, we need another important thing. We need an ammeter. A okay, and this ammeter should work both with this DC and AC. So, this can be like an electrodynamic meter. Okay, so this ammeter, uh, let me write here ammeter A should work with both DC and AC. So, like electrodynamic meter. So, this will indicate, so this the ammeter will indicate the ammeter will indicate the RMS value. Okay. So, the ammeter will indicate the RMS value, not the average value, because this is a AC meter which works both with AC and DC. Okay. So, this is important. Okay. So, we will do one more thing in the calibration phase which is we will record or note the value of the ammeter A. Call this value is say the current is uh, I C. Okay. Say this current is I C current during calibration. Okay. Now, in the measurement phase what we will do of course, we have to go to the unknown source. So, switch K to K 1. So, this switch K 1 will be K 1 we have to move it to position 2 and this switch now this is AC. So, here we also need an AC. So, this also will be moved to position 2. So, K 2 at position 2. Okay. So, this is the in the measurement phase. 
Okay. Now, what we will do? We will adjust rheostat R one until the ammeter reading is same as IC. What is IC? It is the RMS current which was flowing through this wire during the calibration. Now, in the measurement phase, when we have changed everything, the source is changed here. Here also, the source is changed. Now, we will adjust this rheostat once again so that we get the same value of current IC. Now, if we have the same value of current IC, okay, but previous IC was DC. Now, this IC is AC. Okay. So, by when I say that same current IC is flowing, it means the RMS value of the current is same. Okay. Actually, one current is DC, another current is AC, but their RMS value is same. So, it means the RMS value of uh, the AC current which is flowing now is same as RMS value of the previous DC current. If so, okay, if that is the case, so let me write here now. Okay, so, this ensures that, so if same RMS current is flowing, then the RMS value of the voltage across this wire is same, although previously it was DC. Now it is AC, but their RMS value is same. So that means the RMS value of the voltage, AC voltage across the potentiometer pot in short is same as the previous RMS value, previous DC RMS value, right. Now, for DC RMS is same as the average or the DC value itself. So, therefore, we can say that the RMS value of this voltage, okay, here to here is same as the DC voltage which was here previously. Or we can also say the RMS value per unit length of this wire is same as the DC value which was there previously per unit length of the wire, right. So, RMS voltage per unit length will be same as the previous DC voltage per unit length. Which is same as this 0 0.01 volt per centimeter by choice. This is what we have chosen. Okay. So, now we can say therefore, in this where each centimeter represents 0 0.01 volt RMS. So, now we have 1 centimeter is equivalent to 0 0.01 volt RMS. Right? Okay. So, if so, now we can adjust. Uh, so, now this key is that uh, is connected to this unknown source. So, now we can adjust the position of this jockey to find the null with this unknown source and that will give us the value of the unknown source. So, now 
in the measurement phase adjust jockey to get the null. If we get the null at a length L okay, from the left side, then RMS value of the unknown source which is V x RMS will be same as this length L multiplied by if this is L centimeter multiplied by 0 0.01 volt RMS. So, this will be 0 0.0 I mean whatever this is. So, this way we can measure it. So, this is the trick. So, the problem was there is no standard AC cell, no standard AC source. So, by intelligently using this DC cell to calibrate this where we actually have I mean we actually have made this potentiometer useful for AC as well. Okay. So, this is the trick for using AC sources. Now, I will uh, conclude this video, uh, this class with a question. The question to you is that we have said that this supply voltage and this unknown voltage must have same frequency. Otherwise, we will not get balance or null at all. But is that enough? What if this supply voltage and this source, so this supply voltage and this unknown source has different phase angle? So, the question is uh, the frequency of V x and V s are same, but if the phase angle of V x and V s are not same can we get null at all? So, if V x is like this, and if say V s is like this, same frequency, but they have a time delay between them, time difference between them. So, they do not reach their peak and 0 simultaneously. So, can we ever get a null? I think no. So, think of this and we will in our next class start our talk with this question. Thank you.